Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel, I'm Birds of You Politics, and yes, everyone, it is finally here, the Ukrainians have launched that long-awaited spring, now summer, counteroffensive. The Ukrainian offensive is taking place in several directions, according to the Deputy Defense Minister, Hanna Maliar. And this is major news, of course, a major, major change in the war. We had been awaiting this counteroffensive since roughly winter of last year, following the retaking of Kherson by the Ukrainian military. But now it seems we are finally going to have yet another Ukrainian offensive, arguably the fourth major offensive, following, of course, the battles in the north near Kyiv. When the Ukrainians counterattacked, we had the Kharkiv offensive, which took most of that oblast back. We had the Kherson offensive, and now it appears that we have a new offensive mostly centered around Bakhmut and southern Donetsk. So, what exactly is happening? Well, Ukraine had been building up for roughly the last week, which is why you didn't see a video from me yesterday and why you're getting one from me today. And we knew that a counteroffensive was coming, and Russia had even been saying such. Russia claimed that Ukraine had launched an attack in a bid to break through its defenses in the southeast, but Russia said that they had somehow beaten the entire offensive in roughly two hours with 300 casualties, and Ukraine has a lot more than 300 people in that region, and that was pretty obviously false, but now we have even more confirmed news that Ukraine is doing an offensive now, and this is from, of course, someone in the Ukrainian military or in charge of it, at least. So this is very, very important news, especially because Russia really is unable to fight back. Uh, the Joint Chiefs of the United States, Mark Milley, gave an interview on CNN, which I watched, and he talked about how this uh, Ukrainian offensive would destroy the Russians, how the Russians uh, were right to be scared of the offensive. And this is apparently the case. And we know this because Russia has had a huge amount of issues. Uh, Ukraine has recently taken the main heights around Bakhmut, and they're now able to bombard using artillery and other weapons into uh, Ukraine's uh, main attempt right here to take Bakhmut. So this is going to be a major, major threat to Ukraine or Russian control of Bakhmut. And it's going to be a major boost for Ukraine in their attempts to take it. However, there's even more news because while Ukraine is going and attacking Putin, we actually have this man right here. He is a lieutenant colonel captured by Russian mercenary forces under the Wagner Group. This is once again huge news. We had some fighting between uh, the different regions and uh, armies of Russia in the region, especially between Wagner and the Russian army's main leadership, especially Sergei Shoigu, uh, who's the general who's overseeing this whole invasion from Russia. And the little snippets of, I guess, word fighting between the Wagner's leader and the Russian chief of staff eventually escalated into this, where Wagner has captured this man, and they have said that he was drunk, and he ordered his own Russian troops, the 72nd Brigade, to fire on a Wagner vehicle due to harboring a personal animosity. Now, we can clearly see that he's got a damaged nose, he's injured, probably, if not guaranteed, threatened. Uh, he is clearly speaking under duress, if this is true. We really can't tell because when someone's speaking under duress, we have no idea if they're telling the truth. But what we do know is relations between Wagner and at least the higher-ups in the Russian military, maybe if not the Russian elite such as Putin himself, but at least there's a lot of flashpoint tensions between Wagner and the Russian military. So where's this offensive taking place? Well, as I said, the main point right now appears to be Bakhmut. Russia has created a salient right here. A salient is kind of a sticking out point in the line. Ukraine has a salient to the north of that, extending even into Luhansk Oblast, which remains under Russian control. But this is the main salient that Ukraine appears to be trying to take, either through encirclement or just through essentially steamrolling the Russians like they did in Kharkiv and Kherson. Ukraine has also had some minor offensives south of New York. They just pushed the Russians back. The Russians were previously contesting that city or town, I guess. 
And the Ukrainians have also been making some attacks in Andivka, Pisky. They've been trying to take back the remnants of the pre-2014 uh, front, or post-2014, I should say, front line and the pre-invasion front line. And they've also been making some maneuvers in the south, especially south of Velkia Novosika, as well as Vuledar. And they're targeting Pavlivka right here. This is a major area right here because it is the last city before you get to this main railway. And this railway is going to be key for Russia. It supplies them from Luhansk all the way in the east. You can see on the right side of my screen. Down through Khorlivka, Donetsk. It hits all the main Russian cities in Mariupol in this region. And if Ukraine is able to take Pavlivka as well as maybe some of these other cities like Bakhmut, they could really start to encroach on the 2014 line, potentially even threatening Horlivka or Donetsk, those cities themselves, the main two cities of Donetsk and the main two Russian controlled cities of Donetsk. And Ukraine could even potentially go farther. We know as well that Ukraine has talked about trying to get to the Sea of Azov down here, potentially taking Mariupol Berdyansk on the way. This would give them the naval base this would give them a lot of industry this would give them some air bases that were either built recently or had already been built but perhaps more importantly it also allows them to hit this Kerch Strait right here and this strait is where a lot of the russian arms equipment etc is coming in via rostov now rostov city right over here it's right here there's a railway that connects the supplies goes from rostov down here goes over a bridge goes into the crimean peninsula via kerch and then it's going to head up into kherson or in the Melitopol oblast now if ukraine is able to drive south not only would they split the russian front here but they would block the russian supplies here which would potentially cut off this whole group of russians to the west in Melitopol, Kherson, and Crimea, and Crimea especially being a major factor knowing that it was annexed by Russia in 2014, and this is probably a more legitimate claim for Russia and Putin to make to their own people. It's pretty hard for Russia to claim they're defending Russian territory right now in Donetsk or in Luhansk or in Melitopol or in Kherson because those four blasts all were Ukrainian controlled or at least mostly Ukrainian controlled until the invasion. But Crimea has been entirely Russian controlled since 2014. So that would be easier for Putin to claim as Russian. And a lot of politicians across the world are saying that potentially there should be an agreement made there, but we really don't know yet. So, what are some takeaways from the early uh, few hours of this offensive? Well, one, uh, we know that Ukraine appears to be winning. Russia appears to be scared. We've had infighting between Wagner and the main Russian army. And we know that the offensive is coming along this line roughly from Lysychansk or Bakhmut down to Vuledar. And this southern Donetsk front, that's going to be the main area to watch for the next roughly few weeks, maybe a month or so. So... Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.